One of the most horrible and grotesque things that I've ever seen in this world is somebody who's living their lives in the straitjacket of somebody else's expectations. Now, you might think, Bernie, you're overstating it, but actually I'm not. It's a terrible, terrible thing. So let me ask you, how much are the expectations of other people constraining your life? What straitjacket are you living your life in? I'm Bernie Diamond and welcome to Christianity Works as we continue again this week with the next message in a series that I've called How's Your Self-Image Looking? How you and I see ourselves impacts everything in our lives. If we have a low self-esteem, if we don't think much of ourselves, if if we think we're not very smart or or very beautiful or, or very useful at all, that's going to have a terrible impact on the relationships we have with other people because we end up hurting and hurting people hurt other people. So that's why it's so important for us to have a really good sense of our own self-image, a healthy sense, not an unhealthy sense where we're prideful and, and full of ourselves and we look down on everybody. That's not what I'm talking about. That's just as bad as having a sense of low self-esteem. I'm talking about a healthy self-image where we see ourselves for what we are. What we saw in the last program was that we are made in the very image of the living God. When God created everything in the universe, the last thing he created was humanity. He created you and me. And he looked at humanity that he created and he said, let us create man and woman in God's own image. That's what makes you and me so valuable. That's what makes every human being on this planet, irrespective of their income level or what particular socioeconomic group they they belong to. It makes every person on this planet incredibly valuable. And and that includes you. That, That especially includes you. I never want you to imagine that what I'm saying applies to other people, that it applies to people who appear to be wealthy or successful. No, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy applies to you. And one of the things that gives us a low sense of self-esteem is when we've been put like like a square peg into a round hole, when we'd be forced into a situation of being something or doing something that simply doesn't fit with who God made us to be. I'm going to open the Bible now and talk about this very thing because God has something very powerful to say about living to the world's expectations as against living to his expectations. It ends up in a whole different life. Come on, let's have a look. Let's go into Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. Now, I'm using the J.B. Phillips translation because I love the way in which he puts it. Let's have a listen. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mould, but let God remould your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all his demands, and moves towards the goal of true maturity. Don't you love that picture? God's saying there through the Apostle Paul, don't let the world squeeze you into its own mould. See, other people's expectations are like a mould that you're never going to fit into. Because God made you this way, You're not going to fit in a mould that works that way. God made you a square square peg. You're never going to fit into a round hole. I've worked in companies as a consultant all around the world. I'm guessing it's somewhere over about 350 different organisations that I've worked in. In Asia, in Europe, in the Americas, in Australia, in New Zealand, right around the world. I've met a lot of managers and employees, thousands of them, over a period of 20 years of consulting. Can I tell you how many of them were unhappy with their situations? It's a real tragedy. So many people aren't happy because they're being forced into situations where what dominates are the expectations of other people. 
I remember my mother used to be a music teacher, a piano teacher. And she would have students come. She had a piano in the back of our home, and she would teach children the piano. And in fact, the piano accordion and a few other instruments as well. And every now and then, a child would come along, and my mother would teach them for a while, and she'd say to the parent, look, I don't think that your child is ever going to be any good at playing the piano. It's just not what they do. And some parents would listen and they'd take their child away. Other parents would continue to force their children to do something that they weren't naturally made to do. And I remember looking at that when I was a young lad, thinking, that's a terrible thing. That kid can never be good at doing this piano thing. For me, the thing that I was never good at was sport. I love the game of cricket. Um, you may enjoy cricket, you may not enjoy cricket. I happen to be passionate about the game of cricket. But can I tell you, I can't bowl a ball. I can't, I can't hit a ball. I just can't do that thing. I tried for a while, and I'm so glad my parents didn't force me to go and play sport when I was simply no good at playing sport. Being squeezed into a mold that doesn't fit is a terrible thing. You know yourself, if you wear clothes that don't quite fit, maybe you've put on a little bit of weight and, and the waist on your pants or your skirt or your dress doesn't quite fit, or maybe, maybe your collar's a little bit tight. It, it's really not very nice wearing uncomfortable clothes and you come home and you can't wait to strip them off and get into something comfortable. Well, when we are dominated by the expectations of others to be a certain person that we're not, that's exactly what it feels like. It's never going to fit. It's never going to be comfortable. So there you are. You're being dominated by other people's expectations and you just can't enjoy your life. You just can't succeed at what they expect you to do. And when you can't succeed at something, that starts to eat away at your self-image. Well, I have an answer for you today. We're going to continue reading in, in this chapter of Romans chapter 12 because God has something very special to say to you today about how you've been made. Let's pick it up. We'll read that verse again and then we'll continue reading on. Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mould, but let God remould your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good and meets all his demands and moves towards the goal for true maturity. Just pick that up. God's plan for you is good. There's a contrast between being squeezed into the world's mould and, and figuring out what God's plan for you is. And going and living out that plan, because you can bet that God's plan for you is a good fit to who you are. You can bet that what God's calling you to do, what his good and perfect will is for you, is going to let you succeed. And when you succeed, all of a sudden you start to learn what you've been made to do, and you start to get comfortable with who you are. Let's keep reading. As your spiritual teacher, I give you this piece of advice to each one of you. Don't Cherish exaggerated ideas of yourself or your own importance, but try to have a sane estimate of your capabilities by the light of the faith that God has given to you all. For just as you have many members in one physical body, and each of those members has a different function, so we, though we are many in number, compose one body in Christ, and we are all members of one another. Through the grace of God, we have different gifts. Did you pick that up? Through the grace of God, we have different gifts. What's the matter with us that we compare ourselves to the next person and we say, gee, I wish I could do what they could do. I'm not as smart as that person. I'm not as good looking as that person. I could never preach that the way that person does, or I could never write or dance or sing the way that person does. What's the matter with us that we keep thinking that we have to be like the next person? It's very clear that God said he made each one of us with a different gift. God, God's given you such a special gift and ability to do things that I could never do. Truly. You, you may look at me and think, well, I couldn't do what Bernie does. Well, praise God. If we were all preachers on television, it'd be a pretty, pretty boring world, wouldn't it? God's given you gifts to do what you can do. And when you get on and live out those gifts and just keep doing them over and over again, you end up being good at what you do. You end up feeling really good about yourself because you're adding value to other people. Imagine a concert violinist. Imagine this violinist gets up in a big concert hall and this young woman is a virtuoso violinist. She gets up and plays her heart out 
and the lights come on and there's nobody there. The concert hall is empty. That would be perfectly useless, wouldn't it? Then imagine she plays to a packed concert hall of thousands of people. Then all of a sudden, her gift and her ability begins to move them. They experience something beautiful because they've experienced her gift of being able to play the violin. That's what it's like with your gifts and your abilities. God says that we are each part of the body of Christ. When we become part of a church, when we become a Christian and we join a fellowship, we become part of the body of Christ. Maybe you're an arm or a leg or a toe or a foot or, or a nose or an ear or an eye. Whatever your role is in that body, don't try and be like the next guy. Just be good at your role and let other people's lives be impacted by your amazing abilities to do things that nobody else can do. Just listen to this beautiful truth from God's Word. 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what the love of the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. The moment you and I believe in Jesus, we become children of the living God. We become members of God's family. Do you remember your brothers and sisters when you were growing up, if you had brothers and sisters? They were totally different to you. They had different abilities and different gifts. Uh, my sister was really good at some things that I wasn't good at and vice versa. We're all different, but we're part of this family. We're part of this body. And, and God wants you to exercise the God-given gifts and abilities that he's placed within you. The, the gifts that he put down in every strand of your DNA, just the way he made you. He wants you to exercise those gifts as a member of his family. And the more you do that, the more you become who God made you to be. Isn't that a great idea, a great concept? Becoming who God made you to be. The more you live out your giftings and your talents and your abilities, the ones that God gave you by his sovereign choice, the more you're going to experience the joy of knowing, you know what, I'm really happy with who God made me to be. I think one of the most important things in the world is to get happy with who we aren't. Because when we do that, we stop comparing ourselves with other people. Stop comparing yourself. Get, get a hold of the gift that God's given you and go and live that gift and bless other people with that gift. And you will see the amazing things that God not only does through you, but the amazing things that God does in you. Now, we're going to talk a bit more about that after this short break. Now, I've been telling you over these last few weeks about a book that I've written called Your Road to a Stunning Life. I would love to send you a free copy of that book. It's not one of the usual booklets that I do, but a full book, because I know that when you receive the Word of God in your heart, when you can mull over it and contemplate it and receive it, that God is going to lead you into the stunning life that he planned for you. Our contact details are on your screen right now. Please get in touch with us and request your free copy of my book, Your Road to a Stunning Life. And don't forget, if you're able to hop online, you can also have instant access to my e-devotional, some words of, of hope and encouragement delivered to your entry each and every weekday. So please get in touch with us and receive your free copy of my book. Now, I know that you may be thinking, well, that may all be well and good for Bernie. It may be that God came along and God set Bernie free from his low self-esteem. But you don't know the depths of that low self-esteem. You don't know how low I was. On the outside, I was traveling around the world, speaking at all these information technology conferences, and everyone thought that Bernie was confident and Bernie was successful. But inside, I had this thing eating away at me. It was like a cancer. It never went away. I was always trying to fill other people's expectations, always trying to make other people happy. Now, serving other people, it's not a bad thing. Making other people happy is not a bad thing. But when you live your life, dancing to the tune of other people's expectations all the time, that's a bad thing. Because other people want you to do all this other stuff that you may or may not be good at, that you may or may not enjoy doing. And that's what I struggled with. This sense of inadequacy, this sense that drove me almost to the edge of taking my own life. 
See, that's how deep this sense of low self-esteem was for me. It's what prompted me to, to begin this series on self-esteem and self-image because the Bible teaches us that God has an amazing plan for each one of us. I want to come back to some of the things we read in Romans chapter 12 and just go a little bit deeper with that at the moment because I want you to see, I want you to understand that God has some amazing plans for your life. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I'm going to the J.B. Phillips translation again because I, I particularly love how this translation deals with this particular verse. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mould, but let God remould your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, that it meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. The important thing I want you to pick up there is the sharp contrast between what the world has planned for you, what other people have planned for you, and what God has planned, with you, planned for you. Because what the world has planned for you is to shove you into a mould where you won't fit. It, it has a plan to put you in a straitjacket of other people's expectations where you can never be yourself, you can never succeed. It's like wearing uncomfortable clothes all the time. The contrast is that God's plan for you is a good plan. Prove in practice that the plan of God for you is a good plan. Why wouldn't God have a good plan for you? He loves you. Je Jesus came to die for you to set you free. Jesus came and rose again to give you a new life. God loves you so much. I mean, if God loves you that much, what sort of a plan do you think he has for your life? A good one or a bad one? Of course, it's a good one. And God's plan for your life is for you to feel comfortable being who you are. Now, that doesn't mean that everything's always going to be easy. I'm comfortable in being who I am and doing what I'm doing right now, but that doesn't mean that being the CEO and the Bible teacher of a, of a global media ministry is always comfortable, that it's always easy, that it's always enjoyable. There are things that I have to do that are tough. There are things that I have to do that I'd rather not have to do. But the important thing is, whenever those things come along, those conflicts or difficulties or challenges or those mountains that seem that they won't move, whenever they come along, the one thing that doesn't hold me back anymore is a wrong sense of self, a false sense of who I am. When we have that false sense of who we are, we can't get on with God's good and perfect plan for our lives because we're too busy being stuffed into the mold of other people's expectations. God wants you to excel with the gifts that he has given you. So look, let's keep reading. As your spiritual teacher, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the Romans, as your spiritual teacher, I give you this piece of advice to each one of you. Don't cherish exaggerated ideas of yourself or your own importance, but try to have a sane estimate of your capabilities by the light of the faith that God has given to you. So don't try and think, I'm going to go and be that when you can't be that. I'm this important when you're not that important. Don't try and set up for yourself these, these wrong self-images full of pride and full of, full of hubris, and then you can't meet up to them. See, that, that's what I used to do. As a consultant, flying around the world, charging people a lot of money for my time, I used to try and be everything to all people. And I set up these images that I'm good at this and good at that. And then I struggled all the time to actually live up to the expectations that I'd set. God says, don't do that. Don't try and be somebody or something that you are not. I, I know each one of us, you included, have spent a lot of time in our lives trying to be something that we were never made to be. If, if you want to live out God's good and perfect plan for you, if you want to prove how good it is, don't do that. Don't try and shove yourself into a mold into which you're never going to fit. For just as you have many members in one physical body, and those members differ in their functions, so we, though many in number, compose one body in Christ, and we are all members of one another. Through the grace of God, we have different gifts, if our gift is preaching, let us preach to the limit of our vision. If it is serving others, let us concentrate on our service. If it is teaching, let us give all that we have to our teaching. And if our gift be stimulating the faith of others, let us set ourselves to it. Let the man who is called to give, give freely. Let the man who wields authority think of his responsibility. And let the man who feels sympathy for his fellows act cheerfully. 
What's God saying there through the Apostle Paul? He's saying, whatever your gift is, whatever your motivation is, whatever it is that you love to do, that you do so naturally, whatever it is, would you please go and do that? Stop imagining that you're somebody else. Stop trying to be somebody else. Go and do what God made you to do. That is such a liberating message. It, it seems so simple. You might be thinking, Bernie, well, it's, it's pretty obvious. Then why are so many people trying to be something that they're not? Let me ask you, are you trying to be something that you're not? Are you trying to be somebody that God didn't make you to be? I mean, you know the answer to that question. And, and maybe even yourself. There's a sense of delusion going on. We're very good at deluding ourselves. We're very good at saying, oh, no, that's, that's not me. And yet all along, something doesn't quite fit like those clothes, like that, that, that suit collar that's too tight. Come on. God's plan for you is good. God's plan for you is freedom. God's plan for you is grace. Let's keep on reading. Let's see what God says about how we can go about being transformed. Because this transformation from a wrong self-image to a right self-image has, has two things associated with it. Word and deed. The word of God we've been looking at, but then God wants us to go and do it. Are you ready? Let's dive back into God's word. We're going to continue reading now Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. The Apostle Paul says, Let your love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. You might say, well, what's that got to do with all of this? Simply this, it follows right on from God saying, go and do whatever I've gifted you to do. And then he says, Here's how you do it. Love each other with mutual affection. Uh, love your enemies. Rejoice. Do good. Just keep on doing good. Here is how you do good. Bless those who persecute you. See, rehabilitation, if, if I'm in a car accident and, and my legs are broken and I go into rehabilitation and the physiotherapist works with me, I don't sit in a classroom the whole time reading about it. I have to get up in the gymnasium and start doing it. And, and at first... In rehabilitation, when something's been broken and, and you're working to, to fix it, at first, that's not particularly easy. At first, it's a little bit painful to start doing that. But rehabilitation happens when you start doing the right exercises over and over and over again, and all of a sudden, the body heals itself. That's the way God designed us to be. It's exactly the same here in Romans chapter 12 when we talk about the self-image that we have. God says, look, I've done amazing things for you through Jesus. So try and figure out what I've made you to be and what I've made you to do. Do not let the world squeeze you into its mold. Don't, don't go there. Don't have ideas of grandeur about what you can be and who you are when that's not real. But instead, with sober judgment, figure out the gifts that I've given you and now start to do them. Let's keep reading. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with, another, with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So there's this whole rest of the chapter flowing out of God's exhortation for us just to live out who he made us to be. And here's how you do it. You take your gift. In, in my case, my gift is the gift of leadership and the gift of teaching. I take those gifts and I do good with them. I love other people with them. No, I know, I don't do it perfectly all the time, but I try my hardest. I just get up every morning and I try to do good with the gifts that God's given me. And it was through that that God changed me. It was by reading his word day after day and getting up out of bed every day and just discovering what he made me good at and just trying to do good with that, that God rehabilitated me, that God transformed my life. I am so thankful to God that he did that for me. But he needed me to participate. 
He needed me to get up and go and do the things that he called me to do. And they weren't easy. They're still not easy some days. I thank my God that through his word and through his spirit, he rehabilitated me. So I no longer have this this terrible sense of self-esteem. And that's exactly what God wants to do for you. God wants to take any wrong ideas that you have about yourself and restore you back into his image. Uh, That booklet I was telling you about earlier, on the front cover has the picture of an apple core reflected in a mirror. But the reflection, this chewed up apple core out here, the reflection in the mirror is the image of a whole complete apple exactly what God wants to do with you. You may have been chewed out by the world. You may feel like you're a discarded apple core, but God sees you the way he can make you because he made you in his image and he can restore you back into his image. And what God sees in you is the potential of the gift that he's given for you. So please get into God's word. Read Romans chapter 12. Let it impact your heart and let God transform your life. Well, that's pretty much all we have time for. But I just wanted to remind you again that every day I write a devotional called Fresh. It's about helping you draw closer to Jesus by letting his word touch your heart in a practical, loving way, day by day by day. You can get your free subscription to the Fresh Devotion at freshdevotional.org. Just go across to that website, pop in your name and your email, and that will be winging its way to your inbox every day. God bless you as you receive his word. I'm Bernie Diamond. You've been watching Christianity Works, and I'll catch you again the same time next week with another message of his love, his grace, and his power for each one of us in Jesus Christ. Hey, YouTube. If you are blessed through today's message, then click on this button and subscribe to the Christianity Works YouTube channel and continue being blessed and empowered through the Word of God each and every day.